All right, this next video is on domain and range. Again, please keep in mind this is intended for a very quick review and not for someone who has never seen these topics before. The domain of a relation or function is the set of all possible input values, and the range is the set of all possible output values. So for example, if we looked at the function that we saw in the previous video, f of x equals 3x plus 2, the domain of that function would be all real numbers. So why is that? Why exactly is that the case? Well, if you look at the graph of the function here, you can see the arrows here, and that's indicating that the graph continues in this fashion forever. So basically, it's going to go left, and it's going to go right, and it's going to pick up every single x value that's possible. You can make the exact same argument for the range. Because any y value can be used as an output, the range is all real numbers. Now, it's a little bit cumbersome and annoying to write out all real numbers for you know, every single answer um, that we think that this is true for. And so we're going to see in the next video a shortcut for that. So here's another quick example, just so that you get the idea, so that, it's, so that you understand it's not always all real numbers. Here we've got a very much contrived piecewise function just to sort of illustrate some different things that can happen with functions. And again, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to state the domain and the range of this function. So notice that it starts out at an x value of negative 4. And it goes over to the right to negative 2, keeps on going, and then it stops before it gets to a value of 1. So it's important to point out that this open circle is not a point. It's not included in the graph of the function. It's simply a marker to say that the graph approaches that value but doesn't actually get there. Now it skips a little bit of space here between 1 and 3, picks up again at 3, and then goes on forever to the right. Now we can't very well write that whole sentence out because, quite frankly, that's a mouthful and it's just annoying to write all that out. So we're going to take some shortcuts. So this part right here is saying that x includes negative 4, hence the greater than or equal to. x is greater than or equal to negative 4. It's going to pass through negative 2, and it's going to end just before it gets to 1. But it gets everything less than 1. So that's what we're saying in that first part. Then we're saying that it gets to 3, includes 3, hence the greater than or equal to and continues on forever to the right. So again, x is greater than or equal to negative 4, less than 1, and it's greater than or equal to 3. And that is the set of the domain on this particular case. Now let's look at the range. Again, the range is measuring the set of all possible y values. So there's a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. When you're looking at y values, you're looking at the values um, up and down or vertically. Okay, so the key thing there is you want to look at the minimum value and the maximum value. Well, there is no real minimum value because it goes down here and to the right forever. All right, so there's no minimum, it just continues to plunge downward. The maximum value is 2, and then there's a gap right here in between negative 1 and negative 3. All right, so the way that this is going to work then. It's going to pick up every single value along the y-axis between negative 1, non-inclusive, and 2, inclusive. All right, so again, if you look at that on the number line, it's basically not including this, but including this. So that entire set is going to be negative 1 to 2. And I'm going to use y in this particular case, again, because it's a set of all possible y values. So it's going to be between negative 1 and 2, not including negative 1, but including 2. So that's how we write that in a nice, concise fashion. Finally, you can see that at negative 3, it starts up again, and it's going to pick up every y value below that. So again, sort of think of this number line here. It begins at negative 3 and gets everything underneath that. So y is less than or equal to negative 3. And that is your explanation of domain and range.